Hey there, it's Andrea here. I hope you're doing amazing. Are you ready to design your own personalized happiness? <laughs> All right, so I highlighted such a fantastic book this week and it's called Happiness by Design. It's Change What You Do, Not How You Think by Paul Dolan, PhD. This is such an exciting book. So by the end, we are definitely going to have some actionable nuggets that we can really adopt and put into our life almost right away. As you know, I'm obsessed with the action and putting things into practice. And so um, it's a very thought provoking book. Uh, it's a really thorough book and it has so many references to studies and things like that. So we're learning from reputable sources here and there's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of positive psychology within this book. So um, I'm so excited to highlight for you. Thank you so much for joining us. If this is your first time, this is where I highlight books in 15 minutes or less. I suck out all the actionable nuggets that um, you can apply to your life almost right away. So the great thing about that is that, you know, you don't have to necessarily read the book. However, if something does spark your interest, I always recommend to go out, purchase the book and support the author. And because there's probably so many other things that are in this book that, you know, this is just my highlight. So obviously you can go in there if something sparks your interest and pull out more. I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay. So let's jump right in because this book is, I'll, there's a lot of content in this book. I must admit this one is going to be hard to highlight in 50 minutes or less, but I'm going to do my best. Okay. So Paul Dolan, PhD, he's an internationally re renowned expert in happiness and and behavior. And what started off when he was young uh, as a stutter, he had a stutter and he said within his book that this stutter made his life miserable because he literally put so much attention on the problem. He considered it a problem and he gave it so much attention. So it actually made him miserable. And I'm sure you can think of something in your life, right? That you're giving probably way too much attention to and it's making you miserable. <laughs> and I know I have those things too. Um, so it's really interesting the way he put it. And that was the birth of his research and his interest in the study of happiness and the quest for happiness. And so happiness by design really gives us a thought provoking new paradigm um, um, for the way that we think. And so I love this book because uh, it's unlike other schools of thought that suggest changing the way we think first. Um, happiness by design is suggesting that the ch to change what you do. And it's going to make sense as I go through it. And basically designing your lives. So designing your life and creating the life that you want so you can um, direct your attention better to what makes you happy. So focusing on directing your attention on the things that actually are bringing happiness into your life. And you'll discover that that means different things to different people, right? Sometimes what we think should make us happy actually doesn't end up making us happy. So throughout this book, he focuses on actually what are we doing? Like what specifically are you doing that can help bring and um, more attention to the things that make you happier. So, okay, so this is fantastic. You ready to jump right in. So changing our behavior and enhancing our happiness is as much as withdrawing your attention from something that's negative as it is about attending. When he refers to the word attending, he's talking about focusing on, attending to the positive or the things that bring us happiness. So your happiness is determined by how much you allot your attention on certain things. So that is so powerful, right? As we know, and we, this is like re, uh, basically reinforcing what we know is what we put our attention on is what we're experiencing. So, so what you attend to actually, it drives your behavior and it determines your overall level of happiness. If you're focusing on, for example, his example, you're, if if you had a stuttering, a st stammer or a stutter, then you are focusing your energy on that. And if you think and you're perceiving it as a problem and that's what's giving all your attention, it's definitely, it could bring you down, right? So that was his example within the book. And um, so it basically means that we can get better at deciding what we pay attention to and in what ways that we're paying attention to things. So you can be a happier, or the happiest version of you and you can be happy um, just by what you're allocating your attention to and what's better 
best for you. Oh, so that's so exciting. That's, that's really almost liberating, right? When we know that we can direct our attention and that we can really investigate what it is that actually does bring us happiness and where are we putting or um, att- what are we attending to in our environment? I thought that was pretty powerful. So this is what this book is all about. Um, the first half of the book, he talked all about um, kind of discovering, you know, what happiness is, what it is that, and also, oh, the, the scarcity of attention resources. So we only have so many uh, resources for our attention, like where our attention is divided, right? And so we don't have a lot of resources for this attention. So it's really important is what he's saying within his book and through studies and everything to show that we control what it is that we're putting our attention on. And that's that, you know, change what you do. What are you putting your attention on? All right. So that's pretty incredible. So, you know, things like your money situation, things like your marriage or your relationships, things like, and his example was the stuttering. So they can all affect our level of happiness, depending on how much or how little attention we're putting on these things. Right. So think about that. If you think about your day, like what are you putting your attention on? And if you're putting your attention on something, is it something that brings you pleasure and purpose and makes you feel good? Or are you putting your attention on things that, you know, maybe don't um, bring you as much happiness. All right. So then he talked about, so in this book, it's all about here developing your happiness. So he talked about happiness is caused by what we're paying attention to. So he really demonstrates the key to happiness is finding a balance between the things that bring us pleasure and the things that bring us purpose in our everyday life. So um, he says it's really important to um, have both of those. So he's talking about happiness really is the experience of pleasure and purpose over time. So many of the assumptions um, about what should make us happy um, is really important because oftentimes we are paying attention to all those things that we think should make us happy. Like, uh, you know, should getting married make us happy? Should having kids make us happy? Um, And actually, Actually, science shows that necessarily having kids doesn't necessarily make us happier. It doesn't bring us more pleasure, but it does bring us a sense of purpose. So as you can see, it's essential and important to have those two things um, together and have some uh, like a balance between the two. So he's talking about rather than focusing on um, what should bring us happiness, focusing on what actually does bring us happiness. So do you have, you know, anything that you can think of, you know, think about your week or think about your day, what brought you happiness? Um, You know, was it going for a walk with your dog? And what was that? Was that more a sense of pleasure? Or was that more a sense of purpose or both, right? A combination of both. So So he's inviting us to really journal and kind of look at our days and pay attention to this pleasure purpose principle so that there is pleasure. So yes, things are going to either bring us pleasure or pain. And then also things are going to give us a sense of purpose or pointlessness. So he's talking about balancing these two. And to be truly happy, we need to feel both pleasure and purpose. So if we're just overindulging and we're just feeding that pleasure, uh, if we don't have things also in our life that bring us a sense of purpose, then we won't be as happy as we, we could be. So it makes sense, right? So he's talking about the key to this is balancing what works for you personally. So everyone is different. What brings one person and uh, pleasure and purpose is different than everyone else. So as you can see, this is, this is where that birth of happiness by design comes in. So you design your own happiness, essentially. All right. So he also talked about how I was talking, remember, about the attention and how we only have a scarce resource for our attention. Think about it, you know, if you're on the phone, you're texting someone, actually not with the person that's in front of you, right? We only have so much attention to give. And he talks about how it's really important that we ration this attention and that we devote our attention to one thing. And um, when we're focused on one thing, we're actually not focused on another. So the idea is that there is a scarcity in this attention, in our attention. So it's really important to, um, to focus on what it is that we want to attend to and be more aware of it and more confident cognizant of the fact that, um, you know, what is taking our attention? What are we devoting our time and attention to? So he talked about this idea of rationing attention and that is essential to our overall happiness. 
He did make reference to a gorilla, the missing gorilla studies, and where participants were focused on passing a ball back and forth. So they're watching a video of these people passing the ball back and forth. They were asked to count how many times they passed the ball back and forth. And they actually, the people so obsessed with like counting the numbers actually missed a gorilla that walked right through the scene. And it shows you that uh, these studies demonstrate that um, when you're focused on one thing, sometimes we miss other things. So um, they also did a study where, with CT scans where the radiologist actually failed to notice a tiny gorilla in the top corner. And so this is actually situational blindness. So it's the situation is that they're focused on the counting of the passes or they're focusing on that CT scan instead of noticing other things. So it, that just demonstrates that we have an um, we have uh, conscious awareness and attention and we have unconscious attention and that we are definitely have a scarce resource of attention. So that's really in essential, right? So noticing and attending to what it is that we're focusing on. So attending to happiness is all about your attention. Basically what you're focusing on is the glue that holds your life together is how he put it in his book. And it basically converts our stimuli into our happiness and our drive and our behavior. So, um, so this precious resource of attention is responsible for what we do, how we feel, and what we're attending to. So it's really, really incredible just to know that, right? So attention explains why we, um, you know, adopt to weight gain, right? So what are we putting our attention on? Or, you know, a rude husband is, um, you know, if we're constantly focused on how rude that husband is, or, you know, talking derogatory, and you're focused on that, it's going to bring you down. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right. So the other thing is, is if we're focusing on other things, um, then it really explains, and it explains a lot, this attentional resource. All right. So then he talked about how our brains actually become a, an obstacle. So when we're thinking, um, our brains actually are a little bit flawed and they actually make mistakes. So, um, so the whole question is like, why aren't we happier? And so he brings into his book at this point that our brain actually makes mistakes um, because what what we're attending to is affects basically our happiness and our future and our behavior, but we misallocate our attention because of our brain biases or our brain mistaken desires, mistaken projections. We think the future is going to be better or we think that we'll be happier when, you know, fill in the blank. Um, and mistaken also beliefs, right? Sometimes we believe certain things will make us happier and then they end up not. Or um, so the stories that we tell ourselves affect our brain actually makes a lot of mistakes and it's based on our past experiences. It's based on the stories and science has shown that we actually have um, flawed projections. We think that maybe a future outcome might make us happier. We think that money might make us happier, but really it's uh, experiences. And then he talked about how we have mistaken desires. We think that maybe we'll be happier when we have kids, but it's not necessarily true. And science has shown that, right? So we have actually have um, mistakes. Our brain actually has um, these attentional object obstacles rather. So it's like we're focusing on things that aren't necessarily true. So what he's saying within his book then is that we can't necessarily rely on that, that the brain. Um, and so it's amazing that our brain actually makes these mistakes and that it, it it forces us to focus on different things and then it affects our level of happiness. So the fundamental reason why most of us aren't as happy as we could be is that because we allocate attention in ways that are often at odds with really what we're experiencing. So it's what, what we should, what should make us happy, but then it ends up not really making us happy. So isn't that incredible? So then we have a misallocation of our attention and that becomes a problem, right? We have that cognitive dissonance. Like we don't feel, you know, it, it doesn't feel right. So here's where the book gets really exciting. So this is where the book talked all about, you know, you can reorient your attention and you can um, reorient your attention so that you can actually start delivering more happiness. And I thought that was pretty powerful. Okay. So 
the whole second second part of his book is all about the practical plan. So this is where we can decide happiness, where we can design happiness, and where we can do happiness. And what does he mean by all that? So deciding, designing, and doing. So deciding is more about um, figuring out what actually brings happiness to you. So paying attention to your, you know, maybe your past week or looking back on the things that actually make you feel really happy. And and, um, and, and kind of really investigating that and keeping a journal and looking at things that, you know, the decisions that you make and the happiness that you get from that and just paying more attention, deciding what it is that actually does make you happy is the first step. So he says, take time to really give yourself attention and, and be listen and have feedback around what, what is bringing you happiness. It could be the simplest little things like, you know, sitting on the couch and watching The Bachelor, like that brings a lot of pleasure. And so that's the other thing is you want to also kind of take inventory and feedback as to what's making you happy. But then notice, is it bringing you a sense of purpose and meaning? Or is it bringing you more pleasure? Or is it a balance of the two? So really, really cool, right? So kind of investigating and paying attention and getting some feedback from what it is that you're doing in your life and deciding what is it that actually brings you this level of attending to those pleasures and attending to what brings you purpose. I know when I'm coaching some of my teen clients, oh my gosh, like I take so much pleasure in doing that. But but really it gives me this sense of meaning and purpose. Like I am definitely in the right place because it just brings this sense of happiness um, because I definitely feel like I am helping and I'm making a difference in this teen's life. And so that brings me a huge sense of purpose. And so it makes me feel happy and a sense of joy. And so, yeah, so do those things, like go through your list and really let your own feedback reveal and make you notice what's really relevant to you. Like what brings you you happiness. So sucking out those, those things and noticing and paying attention. So that's what I invite you to do in this next little while is that like, you know, an actionable nugget would be to, you know, keep a chart. Um, he did have a chart within his book as well, but you can just even journal, pay attention and attend to the things that bring you pleasure and purpose in your current experience, not projected in the future because we know our brain makes mistakes, but really in your current experience, what's bringing you happiness? Like, you know, shoveling that front walkway, like did that bring you happiness because it looks so good and feels clean? Okay, those are for the people that live, you know, where there's lots of snow right now. <laughs> Anyway, so yeah, and so it's, and the other thing is the things that we don't actually take pleasure in necessarily, but then it, we're driven by that sense of purpose. Like for example, I do not like laundry. I don't like folding laundry, but it's amazing when I add the sense of purpose behind it and I change my mindset around it and I kind of think, wow, like, yeah, actually it's, you know, uh, it makes my, my house run smoother. My kids are happy, you know, they have fresh clothes to clean. It gives me a sense of accomplishment. So I try to convince myself, I, I have to admit that that one's definitely a decision. I have to decide that that's a, you know, there's purpose behind that one. That one's a convincing one. All right. So that's, that's the first step is just deciding and don't try too hard to be happy. He was saying within his book, he's just suggesting to attend to those things, pay attention. It's a, uh, you can re reconstruct your day, kind of go through it. It's a reconstruction method. He called it. Then he also talks about creating a practical plan for designing, designing happiness into your day. How do we do that? Design happiness into our day. So as we know that habit and ritual and primers or reminders in your day and make your environment uh, so that you so you can design your environment to actually bring more happiness into your life is really important. So we can design our surroundings um, in order to make us happier. So it's almost like doing things, designing your day and your life and your surroundings so that it's almost second nature. So it's human nature. So um, he's talking all about things such as priming yourself so that you can act differently, like the defaults that you set up. So maybe on your home screen, like if one of your goals was to read more, maybe you have audible right there on the home screen or um, say one of your goals was to read more you put books in every room right so there's a primer there so you want to make things more default have your gym bag already in your in your car right beside you so it's like 
easy to grab and easy to get to the gym if that's one of your goals. So the reality is, is that kind of making the commitment to do these things and create the environment, design your surroundings so that it makes it so you can, you can, you know, design this happier life for yourself. All right. So the other thing I love that he brought up was this idea of commitment and being committed. So his action was figuring out your own primers. So make a list of some things that you could do. Like, even if it's like, you know, putting something on the wall and like, it's a quote or something that reminds you, I know I have from Brene Brown, give me the courage to show up and let myself be seen. That's a primer I have on the wall and I have a little whale underneath and it says make waves. And so that's a reminder for me to show up every day the best I can and not, not hide from the world because I have a tendency to do that. So yeah, so designing your environment to really help uh, bring about that happiness in your life that, you know, so you can increase your pleasure, so you increase your sense of purpose and that'll ultimately deliver a lot of, you know, good Good feelings for you and joy. Okay, so he talked about uh, integrating these all into your life, designing habits. So really, really important. Creating habits is all about um, changing behavior. So there's a cue, change your behavior, and then you'll and so you can get the same outcome. So the idea is that you want something to slowly start becoming a habit for you, and the best way to do that is through primers, through defaults, like make things actually, you know easy for it to happen. So default setting is that, you know, it is on your home screen. It's already there in the kitchen. I know for me, I do my flossing. My hygienist always says, make sure you floss your teeth. And so if I have my floss little sticks in my drawer, I don't floss my teeth as much. So now I make it more of a default. It's right beside my electric toothbrush. So boom, boom, boom. I go right into that default and I, it almost becomes habit. All right. So that was the section on designing happiness, putting it into your surroundings. I think that's pretty powerful, right? Okay. So the next section in practical plan is is doing happiness. And this is, again, talking more about that attention. So we create, uh, so if we can create rather a rule to pay more attention in our fullest attention, we would all be happier. And his studies have shown that. He um, made references references to studies and just paying attention to what you're doing and who you're doing it with and you know what it is that's in this moment. And um, he's trying to also emphasize avoiding getting distracted from those experiences. The experiences that you in, you're in right now are actually the ones that are going to bring happiness to you, not your projected future experience. Oh, you know, if I have that boyfriend, I'll, you know, be so happy. Um, the reality is be in the experience that you're in, pay your fullest attention, notice what's bringing you pleasure and purpose, a sense of purpose. And the bottom line is pay attention to good experiences and the people that you enjoy. So he's all about surrounding yourself also with people that you enjoy, good people and good conversations and good experiences as often as you can and really applying and paying attention, attending to and being mindful in those moments. And that's powerful, right? As you know, the, the more we attend to these good experiences, you know, I always ask my kids, what's good? And then, yes, we do go around the table. Sometimes we said, okay, well, what was challenging this week and how did you successfully handle it? And then that's another way to kind of, yes, it gets us talking. Um, but you know, focusing on putting our attention and attending to and being mindful in the moment, really spending time with people that you like is what he emphasized in his book and to limit distractions, right? It's so easy nowadays to be distracted. Um, so it's limiting these distractions and he also suggested make a list of your typical distractions so that you're aware of them so that you can actually say, oh yeah, that's my typical distraction. I know for me, it's my phone. My daughter will be telling me a whole long story and I'll just pick up my phone and I'm in there, right? So it's amazing how just making that list sometimes makes it a little more concrete. So what's sucking up your attention? Remember that scarcity resource of attention. So applying that mindfulness, being present and studies have shown that it really helps us. And just doing our life, like being in our life. So 
isn't that incredible? There's a lot of really fantastic things. It's both first of all, deciding, uh, designing and doing happiness and basically like putting our attention and recognizing our attention and paying attention to that pleasure purpose principle. And I say that fast five times, right? I always say that. It's so funny. Okay. So attention is like the glue that holds our lives together is what he's saying with it in his book. And it's so powerful that we can shift our attention to what makes us feel better by paying attention to what brings brings us pleasure, what makes us feel a sense of purpose or meaning. And like everything affects our level of happiness in our relationship and like in our relationships, in our, you know, whether it's weight management, whether that's, you know, happiness as a couple um, with your kids. And so it's really about that, even negative experiences, right? If we're putting a lot of attention on, we might be making it into a bigger problem than it actually is is or um yeah so it's just shifting what we're attending to and paying attention is so powerful and liberating and dr dolan he this is such an original sort of theory where he defines happiness as the experiences of pleasure like even as simple as watching your favorite show but then combining it also and finding things in your life that bring you a sense of purpose like a fulfilling job and career so and we each have this optimal balance. This is what I love about this book. It's literally happiness by design. You're designing your own happiness just by paying attention to that idea of what it is you're paying attention to and also what brings you pleasure and purpose. So that's it. I would love to hear what your takeaway is on that and what it is like, what action you're going to take on, you know, designing your own happiness and the concept of changing what we do, kind of like deciding, designing and doing our life. Um, and, and just kind of, yeah, give me some feedback. Feel free to private message me. Thank you so much, everyone. And have a beautiful, wonderful day.